those people were in really good shape. And once you got up there, you didn't want to come back down. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, no. the views Some of those breathtaking. ruins in Greece have like thousands, like thousands of stairs. It's crazy. Yeah. And they're not evenly spaced. <laughs> yeah. But you know what's, what's weird is, right? It's like little stuff like this. And then you have that big, uh, big iron foot that, you know, inside your armor. <laughs> Um, but you know, what's weird is even back then, um, the Greeks were burning incense and whatever to help set the mood in the house or to clear the house or doing rituals, you know, and different, different um, incense were for different things like Apollo had its own, uh, Aphrodite had another one, you know, um, so it was just kind of weird how even way back when people were using incense and they were thinking about clearing their house. And besides using, you know, they had scent, they had smell, or uh, scent, uh, air, what was it? Fire, oh, yeah. um, visual, because I mean, you know, you had the evil eye, right? Would, would, you know, keep evil at bay, which they had them throughout the house. Um, so there were just a whole bunch of different ways um, to cleanse a house, even back then. Yeah. Which, which leads into our topic today okay so you guys kim and i did our first house clearing together we've both done this i mean kim and i've actually i was counting we've known each other for over a decade yeah yeah and um so we've both done house clearings and space clearings before we did our first one together which was really fun because Kim was there in person and I'm here at a beach house in Florida. Kim's in Virginia. I was working distance. Yeah. Um, some of my work was while Kim and I were either, you know, uh, video chatting or phone talking and some was just done. Okay, let me take a break, meditate and we'll meet up. Kim set up equipment monitoring equipment yep and she got some freaky stuff <laughs> oh man so um well some of it was just your normal like what they call poltergeist type of activity right you have knocks you have things moving you have banging nothing you know threatening it's just hey did you hear that knock on the wall or you know those kind of things mm -hmm. um did you know there are some neighbors that when where I was at. So, you know, not saying all the noises were this, you know, but, you know, I'm willing to go 50 50 on the noise, right? And half of the neighbor, half was uh, spiritual. Um, we did get some. No neighbors would be that loud, that consistently. True. Um, but, I, you know, I'm err erring on the side of caution for the say, right. saying that it's all 100%. It's just we do have outside factors, right? So sometimes, right. you know, it's just like, okay, you know, hell, I'll even go 90, 10. If you want 90% real, you know, from real life, I still have 10%, right? So, you know, whatever yeah. number. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying some of those where it's obvious, that it's just like a knock, yeah, a break, yeah. a knock, a break. That would not be a neighbor. No, right? agreed. But some of yeah. the other bang noises was like, you heard it, but you couldn't tell where it came from, but there was no other noise associated. So it's like, did the neighbor drop something next door? You know, so. It, but what got me was your audio recording taken in the middle of the house where there was no one around. Yeah. And there was a person speaking on the audio recording. What got me even further was the, there's like static, a lot of static noise, which is also weird in a silent house. Yeah. Like. A, re an, a recording device just recording nothing will record nothing but that was a lot of static yeah. and the voice sounded really quiet but very clear so you guys I put this in um, my sound mixer to try to reduce the static and increase the volume of the person talking and my sound mixer you know it shows like the lines of every single type of sound it you could hear the person talk, but it did not acknowledge it as an actual uh, data point. So yeah. there was no way for me to increase the volume. Even though I could hear it, I'm like, I, I hear it, come on, come on, program, <laughs> I hear it. Just make it louder. But while it 
recorded all the static and stuff as data points. It did not acknowledge the voice as a data point for me to go and fix it. So I'm like, spooky person talking in the middle of an empty house, you know, except for Kim at the far other end, looking at some equipment and recording equipment will not acknowledge it. The other thing is Kim sent me um, this recording on, to my phone. And when I tried to play it on my phone, my phone <laughs> shut off. It did more than shut off. It fried and it. it broke. <laughs> It fried my phone. I went to, and it's a brand new phone. Like I got it a couple of days before. So I went to the phone store, gave me a brand new phone. They're like, this is this. we're so sorry. We gave you such a bad phone here. Have a better one. <laughs> yeah. And the kicker, the voice on the EVP sounds like me. Mm -hmm. That's the kicker of this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I it wasn't was sure a, if you'd want to share that because. Yeah. You know, that, but yeah, that part, that's the whole kicker, right? And so maybe somebody else has had an experience like that. I haven't. I've done years of uh, ghost hunting, shall we, shall we say? And um, I've seen a lot. I've heard a lot. Even the one of uh, the nasty voice saying, get out. Um but I have, other than me actually physically speaking, I have never had my voice sent back to me on an EVP. Yeah. So. so we're not sure if there's another Kim in another timeline also clearing the house or if another Kim in another timeline I'm is trying to talk to this Kim. I'm or, haunting people. Or <laughs> Kim, Kim even said, you know, sometimes unpleasant entities will imitate you so maybe it was someone imitating her i didn't get a bad feel from the house though that was the yeah. weird part right because normally when you walk in and anybody who's walked in or been around somebody of uh, the only way to describe it is sheer evil right or dark right because it, uh -huh. it's hard to explain but when you get around this type of person or entities you feel it and you know it and you're like i just want out of here and i didn't have that Right. So yeah. that's why it was really, I was kind of dumbfounded on, I'm listening to myself. What am I saying? You know, is it the lottery numbers? Cause you know, I'm totally for that. But, yeah. It was, just, it was kind yeah. of weird. So it was a very active house. There was a lot of activity and yeah. uh, we were told this activity has been increasing lately. Yeah. So what we did, because this person did not want the spirits like banished to hell or like she just didn't want them in her house but she right. didn't want to harm them because they weren't malevolent right so uh since i am a prana shakti master teacher which is a hindu form of of bringing in uh, oh yeah, Leah is one of my Prana Shakti students too. <laughs> She's really good at it. Uh, bringing in love, the purest form of love from all frequencies of all dimensions and all beings of love. And it flows through. And it's, um, I'm trained in creating, it's not space protection because whenever you're trying to protect yourself, you're putting a wall around you you're blocking things and as we all know whenever we put a wall of protection around our heart like oh i got broken hearted i'm going to protect myself all you're doing is blocking love mm -hmm. um there is so many modalities towards healing us from the walls we create with yeah. prana shakti you bring in pure love and i mean go ahead you you don't have to practice prana shakti to invite pure love. <laughs> right. Any of us can do it. This is a specific, powerful technique, you know, that I'm trained in. And you learn to um, connect this love to specific mark landmarks in the house and build a, a glow of love that goes way beyond all property lines. 
so that anything that comes to it must I must it it either goes away or it becomes a being of love. Only love can come through. Only love can exist here. So we spent what like four days, I think, just yeah. keeping this going and while Kim was monitoring. And mm. then I got mm. sidetracked <laughs> and didn't. <laughs> But we weren't planning on keeping it permanent. Right. But the activity did go down while it was going. Uh -huh. He said, that, you know, it did one go down and it was real quiet in the house, you know, that kind of thing. And then when you got sidetracked, um, some noises started coming back. So it's yeah. uh, now it's time to get like, I think you were talking about it today about getting a shaman in or something to uh -huh. see what exactly it is and see if any fissures need to be uh, closed up and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. There is. Now, yeah. I mean, I've gone in and done house clearings where I need to create portals and bring it like sometimes you got to get pretty, create grids and networks and mandalas and bring in yeah. ancient spirits. Like sometimes house clearing, your the goal really is not to harm the beings that are there. Right but to send them to a place where they can heal and return to the beings of love they once were before they went down a path. So, um, you know, sometimes, because if you just banish them, all you're doing is saying, you know, hey, soul sucking baddie, you can't get to be <laughs> here, go over there. You know, <laughs> you have to do something with them. Right. And you're not going to like send them to the most foul pit of hell because that will either make them worse or it'll make them happy. Yeah, the goal. <laughs> Hopefully, it makes them happy. But you know, but you know, according to some, there is no heaven, there is no hell, right? There's just the afterlife. Yeah, which is a series on Netflix. Just saying. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> she's Meryl Streep. She's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So you were saying though about yeah, some people believe in the afterlife, some people don't. It doesn't matter if there's remember, if there is a being, whether they're in 3D or if they are non-physical, and right. they're purposefully causing harm, either they are like psychotic or something, or they're hurt. Either way, you want to get them away from where they are and what they're doing to a place where they can be helped. Exactly. Yes. I exactly. am trained in this kind of house clearing of making sure whomever is, you know, running around trying to like murder the poor humans who just bought their dream house or whatever, that all of these beings are taken to a place where they can be helped and you know, portals are cleared and like everything is healthy. That's the goal, healthy. So my, uh, my training is a little different. It's, uh, I use my magic wand here <laughs> and I open a portal and tell them to go through it. Um, and it it's, and it's the destination of wherever Expect they want. Ramos. <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> Disappearance. Expelliarmus. <laughs> 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 But um, so, yeah, it's that's what how I was trained. And, and these are definitely, you know, lessers, you know, if you go on the whole hierarchy. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, it just it's like, hey, here, here's we're opening up a door. And if you want to cross over, it's going to take you wherever you need to go. Uh -huh. And it'll be open, you know, and we you used to do it for like 12 hours. Right. So it's not a, you have you have 15 minutes to make a decision. You have some time. And hell, bring your buddies in. Let them go too, right? So anybody in the area that could see it if they wanted to cross over because maybe they missed their portal, they could walk through it and then it would naturally self-close. So um, we did a lot of that kind of, of crossing over of people. So, but yeah, that's, you know, the, the beginning stage is like, hey, psh, hitchhike, bus. <laughs> you know, kind of like the, the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland, right? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,